Hey YouTube, this is Razor here, and I'm going to be doing my deck profile for Monarchs for the April ban list. And this is a quite interesting build. I think it's a uh, it it goes a little bit against the grain of what is commonly accepted because a lot of people like to play the upstarts and chicken games to make their Monarch deck basically a 33 card deck, you know, with the terraformings and everything like that, but I feel like I've taken a slightly different approach where I'm actually running a 42 card deck. Now, before you dismiss this deck profile, I want you guys to have a just open your minds a little bit about this because not every deck is going to have their optimal deck count at 40. Some decks prefer to run, you know, 41 or 42 cards for the reason being that you don't want to open up multiples of certain cards. And the same goes for Monarchs. I mean, you run triples of several Monarch spells and traps, and some of them can only be used once per turn anyways. So by thinning out your deck and turboing through, you're, oftentimes you're just going to be drawing into multiples of those certain cards, which really doesn't help you in that situation. Like in any game state, you want to have multiple cards that are actually active that turn if you have just pseudo advantage you know cards that just sit in your hand doing nothing for you that turn i mean that's really you know not helpful i mean yeah you're you're getting card advantage you're getting cards to your hand but if they're not all doing something for you that moment they're, they're essentially just worthless you're not worthless but just, they're just not doing anything for you that time. So that's the important thing to keep in mind is, you know, the decks that are the most successful are going to be the ones that can recruit all their cards at any one time. If all their cards are doing something, you know, dur preferably both during either player's turn, then you, you got more cards working for you at majority of the time versus some cards where... They, they just can only be used on your turn or once per turn and they're just they just sit there after that so for that reason I would like you guys to just uh, keep an open mind about this so it's I'm running 42 cards and we'll, we'll go over the build right here so we run the triple Erebus let's see if we can get it out of the glare triple Erebus triple Aether Best Monarchs in the game. Um, they just help set up your deck. Very good. Um, then we run the triple regular Thestalos. Now, I don't see a lot of people play this card because um, either they play the Karaz or the Mega Monarchs. Um, I prefer to keep the level 8 count a little less because um, I, I prefer to have one Tribute Monsters because sometimes you don't have domain all the time or the multiple tributes so I prefer to just open up with this the Stalos uh, it's a great first turn play like these cards Erebus and Thestalos are great first turn plays because they take away from your opponent Aether is a great first turn play but it just kind of thins out your deck more um, I only like to summon Aether during my opponent's turn She's like your defense line, and these are your like offensive lines. They take away from your opponent. This one also sets up. This one sets up, but it's also defensive. And then we run the two Vanities. Now, Vanities is uh, unfortunately not a full Monarch because it has the 12,000 or 1,200 defense. Um, so it doesn't work with Tenacity, but that's fine because I'm running uh, double Allure in this build. Now... I understand that's kind of controversial with Monarchs because you don't want to allure your Erebus, you don't want to allure your Eidos. Um, but actually, in my opinion, there are some times where you do want to allure away an Eidos because um, in this build, I run three Eidos and two Aideas. So you run two Aidea, th there's no reason why you should run three because once you have a pair of uh, Aidea and Eidos in the grave, a Eidos is just continually going to cycle through the same copy so the rest of that you draw are just not going to be helping you in anyway so once you just get these set up 
I mean, there's no reason why you should play more than two. Um, obviously, you play at least two because you just want to up the chances of you actually opening up one of these guys. But uh, there's no reason why you should play three, is the reason. So then we play the one Mithra. Great uh, first turn play with the Thestalos and then the Erebus. Uh, helps you with the, you know, to trigger your return. Just Mithra, Thessalos, if you need to set up, Mithra can help you tribute summon for that turn. So like, let's say you didn't have Domain out and you didn't have an extra Prime to use as a tribute fodder. You can just pretty much, you know, climb up the ladders by tribute summoning twice. So if you didn't have enough tribute for Erebus to set up your grave with the Monarch Spells and Traps, you Mithra, tribute Thestalos, take away from your opponent. Then summon an, an Erebus because you can just use the Stalos as the entire tribute and setting up your grave while getting rid of two of your opponent's cards. So it's really powerful play. Um, so now we run the triple Eidos because we want to up the dark count. So a lot of the times there there are a lot of situations where I would just draw Eidos and an Adia. So, by having these two pairs in hands, you know that the Eidos in your hand is pretty much useless um, anyways because AD is going to grab out the Eidos from the deck. So, you might as well just allure the extra one away. Um, same with Erebus. Uh, now, of course, it's not ideal to allure away an, uh, an Erebus, but the, my point is, if you're going to brick, you might as well use allure to help yourself unbrick than to just sit with the with a, an Erebus that doesn't do anything for you if you couldn't summon it. So, and a lot of the times you're gonna be able to return um, tribute Thestalos, get an extra Erebus, and then just allure the extra one away. I mean, it's, you're not gonna be banishing all your darks in the game. It's not like you're alluring away your whole deck. It's only gonna be used once, maybe twice in a duel, but. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, I feel like people are just scared of using Allure because, you know, obviously common sense tells you you don't want to Allure Erebus and you don't want to Allure Eidos, you know, sometimes. But, you know, for the times, you, you just got to be smart by using Allure. There, there are plenty of times where you get multiple darks in your hands and it clutters. So you, you just fix your hands to where you, you just get rid of the extra cards that you don't need. So, the other, the spells now, we're running one for one. Foolish. Two alerts. These are your consistency cards. You one for one, so you can bring out a Dia. Uh, so you can tribute someone twice that turn. Um, foolish to either send Erebus or your ideas. Uh, that's the only reason why you run Foolish. So you either Foolish to idea to recycle your stuff or turbo more with Pantheism. Or if you need to get a monarch to your hand, you foolish the Erebus. And then Allures for consistency. The the great thing about Allure is that it allows you to draw first and then you banish. So you may, you know, have like in the case the example I gave with Idea and Eidos in your hand. I mean you, th there's no reason why you need this one in your hand anymore because you're gonna normal summon that, bring this out from the deck. Um, so you thin out your deck, optimizing your chances of drawing into a monarch if you haven't already, and then you, you obviously will allure, draw some cards. Let's say you drew into Thestalos or Erebus, then you tribute summon um, off of return. You get another monarch, and then I mean it, this just does so much for you. Like it, it, there's no reason why you should be scared of using allure. You just have to use it smart. Um, then we play the two twin twisters. Great against the against back row heavy decks. Um, like the biggest problem I see with monarchs is that if your opponent interrupts you, like if they if they interrupt your phase of your weakest point, your weakest point in monarchs is summoning the little guys, and they affect Valor or they stun, negate them somehow, or just blow them up. So if they interrupt you during this phase of before you get out your tribute summon monsters you're, you're pretty much ending your turn 
So Twin Twisters helps with that, clear out their back row, and also in the mirror match you want to get rid of their return so they are forced to waste their searches on recovering another return uh, rather than you know using their searches to get out their Stormforce for the Stormforce War. Um, so Twin Twisters is a great option. And you don't mind the discard because again you got a lot of cards sometimes you get multiples of so Twin Twister can help set up some plays. And then for the Monarch Spells and Traps, we run Triple Pantheism, Triple Tenacity, oops, that went out of order, Triple Domain, what the, oh. Triple Domain, and then the Triple Stormforth, Triple Return, so, triple return is great because I see a lot of people are catching on to how good it is to run three because you're you're guaranteeing yourself to open up at least one by drawing into it or if you search it off a of pantheism you, you you reveal three and they gotta pick one of them so that guarantees that you'll be plussing that turn you'll be setting up your plays you'll be thinning your deck um, you'll get another monarch to your hand that you can potentially lure away if you just want to keep turboing. Because if you have two Erebus in your hand, you're only going to be using one that turn anyways. And if you're you know, constantly searching more Monarchs, you're going to have another Erebus next turn anyway. So um, the, the return helps with the consistency. And for the traps, all we're, all we're running is the two Primes and two Escalations. Now, two Primes is fine because I don't want to break by opening up double Prime. Because if you open double prime, it's not that great. Um, obviously, you're going to pantheism one of, one of them away. And then the second copy will just act as a spellbook of tower. But in the early stages of the game, it's not that great. Because you want to, you know, obviously use the prime to banish stuff. And if you're too busy recycling, then you're, you're drawing cards, yes. But at the same time, you're removing your setup by shuffling them back to the deck. Prime, the, the on-field effect for Prime as a trap is only useful during the late game. During the late game is only where you're starting to run out of Stormforce, you're starting to run out of Monarchs, where you need to, you know, recycle your your stuff to, you know, get back your resources in the deck. Otherwise, Prime is just not that great to use on the field for the trap effect. Um, so you don't want to open up double or multiples of these. So that's why I only run two. And I understand people run three just so they can see it in their hand at first, so they can just simply pantheism away without wasting a search to get it with the, ten uh, with the tenacity. Um, and then you also run double escalation. Um, I, I like double escalation to see it more often without having to search for it. Uh, same reason why I run the triple return, but three is too much. I feel like two is fine because same reasoning with the prime, like I don't want to open up multiples of these obviously because they're dead if they're multiples um, but um, but yeah they're, they're good to see more often as if you run two so with this build there I'm running 42 now the reason why I run the 42 just to explain it a little further is because just if you look at the build you look at monarchs you're running triple pantheism triple tenacity triple domain uh, storm force return so I'll give you that triple pantheism, like drawing multiples of pantheism is never bad. Like it's m most of the time it's going to be like awesome for you. Like you can pretty much get your hand to whatever you need most of the time. Um, now triple uh, multiples of Stormforce isn't bad either because you can use one on your turn and one on your opponent's turn for Aether's effect. So okay, I'll, I'll give you that. Multiples of that is not too bad. Now, multiples of these cards are going to be problematic. So you don't want to open up multiples of return unless you're pantheism one of, one of them away. <clears throat> and you don't want to open up multiple tenacities, uh, you know, obviously because you only can activate one. So there are nine cards you don't want to open up multiples unless you pantheism one of them away. And then 
you don't want to run open up multiples of these either so this is the reason why I play 42 is because there are several cards that you run that you don't want to open up multiples and also with the monarchs if you break with a with three or four monarchs in your hands with just monsters and no spells and traps that's another brick you can run into so by upping the the deck count just a little bit where you can fix your hands with the lures you know get rid of the extra the excess monsters that you're not going to be even using you reduce your chances of opening up multiple cards like this and you reduce the chances of breaking with multiple monarchs as well because 11 I run 11 tribute monsters, so 5 here, 6 here, so 11 tributes in a deck out of 42. So if you want to run the percentages, they're a little bit less than uh, what you would open up with 11 out of 40. But remember, you have two allures as draw power. You have the foolish, you have the one for one. So in order to get the consistency cards right, so if you don't have a monarch in your hand, these six cards are going to help you get to them. Either Foolish, the Erebus, draw more cards, draw more cards. If you don't have the Tribute Fodder, you have one for one. You have the six, six Tribute Fodder and the one for one. And you have the Allures, Pantheisms, and the Primes as Tribute Fodder. So really, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 Tribute Fodders, and f four, five, 5 ways of getting to them. So you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 ways of getting a way to get into a Tribute Monster, and 5 additional ways to draw and get your Tribute Fodders. And then you've got the rest of the miscellaneous stuff like the twin twisters and um, just the multiple monarch spells and traps so that's my reasoning on the ratios just having a perfect balance of the ratios I feel is important to the monarch strategy um, you know especially where a deck that runs multiples of everything that can't be used more than once per turn is uh, very crucial I mean some decks where they run multiples of everything, they can afford to because their cards just do a whole lot more by themselves. But if you have a combo heavy deck like Monarchs where multiple cards can only be used once per turn, um, that, that's the reason why you know the ratios are very important. So yeah, that's my deck profile on Monarchs. I hope you um, understood or at least can understand why I played a 42 card deck and you know, my reasonings on the tech choices.